Thanks for staying with us. Um, I will go with OT first. What did you find for us in the news today? Um, okay, so uh, hang on one second. I need to try to remember what my story was. Uh, give me one second. Maybe you go to Issy. I'll come right back to you. <laughs> today is that day. Today is that day. Forgive me, guys. <laughs> Issy, so what did you find? I don't remember what my headline is. Oh yeah, okay, okay. I remember now. So, can you still hear me? Okay, go ahead, Itzi. So my headline reads: NDLEA seizes illicit drugs worth sixty billion in two months. Now, this was um, uh, this was a comment or declaration made by the retired Brigadier General um, Buba Mawa. And the interesting thing for me about this story really was the fact that where where as we know, most of the crime in this country, a lot of the times with the robberies and things like that, you hear that the users were high on some drug or the other. And the fact that he is now saying that if we can prevent people from using drugs, that we would be able to cut criminality um, within the country by 50%. Now, for me, the, 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 the main thing that caught my attention with this um, headline is the fact that we've always had a drug problem, right? We've never ever addressed holistically how these drugs are getting into the country and what is happening, but it's getting worse. You remember back in the day, it used to be um, Ogogoro and Shekwe and all these different things. Now we've moved on, we've banned Codeine after that whole BBC um, expose. But we still, the government is not doing anything holistically about this drug problem. All these people, you know those vendors that sit on the side of the road that sell all sorts of funny, funny mixes. There was another article that I read that talked about how these, these vendors were blending all sorts of drugs into all sorts of different funny names. I think we talked about that at some point last year. And it's the same thing with our government. Every time something comes into the fore, we talk about it for five minutes and then we move on. So the fact that we can still be seasoned in this economy up to 60 billion naira's worth of drugs in just two months. It's scary to tell you what the size of that industry is because you know that this 60 billion that has been seized, it's not even 50% of the industry. So imagine how much is actually truly out there. It's quite a scary thought. Hmm. Very scary. And you know, so, I mean, what hearing you speak, it just occurred to me what I noticed yesterday at the along the Lekki Ekpe Expressway. Yeah. Young boys, you know, broad day, like taking, um, what's it called? Mm. Um, weed and all of that. Tell me how these people, they will be normal. They can't be normal. You're talking about the, the, on, a, on a normal day. Even the, the drivers we have that are driving the commercial vehicles, they all are All of them. If I one driver, after drugs drinking, drugs he well. threw it off, um, from the window. I think they had, a, um, um, uh, what's it called, um, uh, some sort of um, um, evaluation carried out on the drivers recently or some years back and they discovered that 60% of, or what am I saying, about 80% of the drivers on the road were all high on one substance or the or other. The other. So it's, it's something that mm. we should look into. But how is it actually getting into the country? Oh, it is well. Yes. Um, what did you find for us, Isi? OK. Um, the, my, my story is kind of related to, um, is related to our topic for today. And you know in Nigeria, there is no penal, actually there's no penal uh, code for uh, pu of punishment for um, those that rape, uh, or the rapists that actually rape boys or men because it's not recognized, okay? But in this case, we have a, a situation where a 40-year-old man was sentenced to life imprisonment for raping a, an 8-year-old boy, mm -hmm. okay? He, had, um, he took advantage of this boy in his house, and he was discovered by the lesson teacher. But the thing here is not who or how he was discovered. The thing now is that he has been punished. And I don't think that punishment will be enough for what that little boy has encountered or gone through with this man. Because someday, somewhere, somebody might grant him some sort of, um, um, what's his name? So you're thinking he should, he should just have sentenced him to death? No, I'm saying that he should have been castrated. Okay, we are back to that. Yes. Okay, we'll continue the conversation <laughs> when we start the conversation. <laughs> ah, you see. Hmm. All right, so on those um, House of Assembly member hit by straight bullets. I, I mean, Uti shared this story, and I thought, ah, I put my hand on my head. Hmm. How did it happen? Um, straight bullet at the Lagos airport. It says a member hmm. of the Ondo State House of Assembly was hit by a straight bullet at the local wing of the Mutala Mohammed Airport in Lagos on Thursday morning. That's this morning. Wow. 
So the uh, intelligence that gathered that a security detail attached to Brigadier General Buba Marwa, the National Drug Le Law Enforcement um, Agency chairman, mistakenly mm. discharged four bullets while trying to conduct a safety procedure before handing over hmm. his firearms to um, FAN, that's um, the Federal Airport Authority, you know, the security operatives at about 7.30 a.m. this morning. So he said that the, a bullet shell hit the Ondo State lawmaker on his leg while some um, accidentally discharged bullet hit nearby walls and um, chaos within the airport, destroying some properties. Wow. Fortunately, thank God, no life was lost. But aren't, usually <laughs> when you're discharging bullets, aren't you supposed to shoot it into the air? And see, even that bullet into the air, I saw a documentary on, uh, I think I've mentioned this before, a documentary on um, Discovery Channel, that even yes. that bullet in the air is also as dangerous as shooting it, you know. Because when Directly. it's coming back down, it comes back down with a lot of um, force. force. I'm just saying wow. that why do we always have these things happening? The, last mm -hmm. year, I think it was um, Speaker Guajabi Amila's um, aide that mistakenly was hit. And yes. yeah, he shot somebody to, uh, somebody to death, you know. Yeah. A newspaper he vendor, died, I think. Actually. Yeah, that one yes. died. So let's just be careful, please. Exactly. Yeah. All right, and so we'll take a break. Yeah, so like the way you said, let's be careful. What did, what, what, what did you say? This is like we're talking about. Hmm. This is more than be careful. Like, you know, the, that, that's what really got me about the story. Like, let's just, you know, whilst he was carrying out safety procedures, I mean, first of all, why do you have to have a loaded weapon? And then you're not even trained enough to secure your weapon safely to the extent where you discharge four bullets. If those four bullets had hit four people, there'd be four families right now crying. So we can say thank you, thank God that, you know, no lives were lost. But it just goes to show the ridiculousness of what we do in this country. That somebody, and that's probably an automatic rifle. It's not a pistol. Yeah. And you have four bullets in an four. airport. You could have just erased somebody's life like that. I mean, thank God nobody was killed. But it just exactly. that's, that's just thank God. That's all we can say. Exactly. All right. So we'll take a break. When we return, we're going to be talking about rape, the justification, and the punishment. Stay with us. We'll be right back.